My name is Tara Babcock. I'm here for Zoomin.tv Games, and I am here with Konrad Tomaszkiewicz, who is the game director of Witcher 3. How are you doing today? Hello, guys. It's, it's, it's very nice to, to, to see you, and I am doing very well, but it's very busy. We didn't, you know, suspect that we would get so huge audience out there. Uh, I'm very happy because people love the game and, and uh, it was, you know, busy time before the, uh, the convention because we need to make this presentation, but it was worth it and now I know that this is the good direction, people just love it and I'm very, very proud. That's awesome, glad to hear that. So tell me a little bit about the Witcher series for those of us who haven't played it. Uh, the Witcher series uh, are the games, the non-linear RPG games with these uh, in, in, in the dark fantasy uh, lore, and uh, they are about the Witchers. And Witchers are the professional monster hunters uh, who was created only for killing the monsters. They are like a tools for the humans, and you play one of these monster hunters who who was mutated when he was a boy. So it is going to be a little more about Geralt and his um, personal story, right? That's going to be really like the focus of the whole story. Exactly, yes. Uh, Geralt is, is the center of the story right now. And of course, there are, you know, war in the background. There are some political actions in the background. And if you will do the side quest and if you do some also main quest, you can impact this, this situation. And, you know, uh, we, from the first, uh, first part of the game, the most important for us was this storyline, the immersion with the storyline, emotional approach to the storyline and the choices. In our game, every choice got its own consequences and you cannot predict them. They are not black and white. Uh, they are like a shades of gray and you know, even if you, for example, help someone and you think that is good, uh, later in the game he can do something wrong for people you like. And you, you never know if, you, if you're doing good or bad. So um, tell me a little bit about the mature content that's going to be in the game. I know The Witcher is a very mature yeah. series, yeah. so what can we expect? Uh, you can expect, of course, uh, relationships, you can expect uh, sex, you can expect uh, brutal combat, uh, you can expect, you know, uh, situations you can meet in the real life. I mean, the, you know, the uh, dangerous situations which uh, you can do something or not do something, and you can meet people who, 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 who you know, doing some wrong things and you can, you know, uh, work with them because sometimes you need to. But, uh, you know, it, it's like a real life and we will put every major stuff we got in there. That's awesome. So The Witcher has gone open world. Tell me a little bit about being on the development team of an open world RPG. Oh, it's, you know, it's very challenging. Uh, we decided in the beginning, you know, my vision was to uh, combine two types of games. Uh, combine the story driven single player game with the open world game. And it, nobody before done it, you know. And uh, the main challenge is that uh, in Second Witcher and the first one, we got a very intense storyline. You, you, you felt that always something happening and you, you are in the flow of the game. And when you got open world, you got you know, huge distances and you can forget what you, what you, what, what you need to, to do. And we got many features which uh, allow us to make this intense story-driven game in the open world. That's pretty intense. So tell me a little bit about how this is different from Skyrim. I know a lot of people are saying that, you know, open world RPG, it's going to be a lot like Skyrim. Yeah, uh, I think that the most, the biggest difference is the uh, storytelling and the characters, as I, as I told before, because Every character in, in, in our game is different. Every character is unique. Our story guys pay huge attention to create real uh, persons in the game. And uh, always when you are doing quests, you, you get some emotions from it. And you re my goal is to uh, give this feeling to you that when you finish the game, you will, you will, you will feel that you just uh, finished some great adventure and it was complex, it was wise, it was mature and you, uh, you want to do it again. And uh, for me, Skyrim was about exploring a world, development your character, crafting items and so on and so on. But I missed there this complex and, you know, mature storyline. And now we try to combine these two types of game. 
Was Next Gen something that was on the front of your mind when you started to develop the game, or is it something that you just kind of got sprung on you? No, we, we, we thought about uh, from the beginning that we want to make a game for the next gens. We knew that there will be next gens because we are very close to the Sony and to the Microsoft. And you know, these decisions you need to make uh, before you, you start making a game because it impacts on every system in the game. Uh, and you know, we, 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 we couldn't afford to uh, rewrite rendering, for example, and put this old candy stuff you saw in the yeah. presentation. If we if we knew that we need to make game for 360 and PS3 because it's, it's you know it's too too uh, too weak for now and and that's why we decide for the next gen and for the PC of course. All right, thank you.